So now let's talk about testing for ions and testing for gases and we're going to begin this series by talking about the test for cations and cations are positive ions and we're going to discuss five different cations and how to test for them. So testing for cations involve a reagent, actually two reagents which are sodium hydroxide and ammonia. So we're going to see which cation uses which and what does that lead to. So we're going to talk about ammonium ion which is NH4 plus copper ion which is Cu2 plus iron 2 which is Fe2 plus iron 3 which is Fe3 plus and zinc, zinc is 2 plus. So all of these, all those five cations, they use sodium hydroxide. But ammonia, let's see. So ammonia uses sodium hydroxide, copper uses sodium hydroxide also, and or ammonia so both of them work and the rest is like copper so they use sodium hydroxide or ammonia sodium hydroxide or ammonia and finally sodium hydroxide or ammonia so only the ammonium ion uses sodium hydroxide the rest use both now let's see what will that yield. Let's change the color to make it clear. So let's begin with ammonium ion. And ammonium ion is NH4. And for ammonium ion, we're going to use sodium hydroxide plus a little heat. And that will give us ammonia gas. And we're going to test using red litmus paper plus so we use red litmus paper and the red litmus will turn blue since ammonia gas is basic so we're gonna test for the presence of ammonia gas using litmus paper red litmus paper sorry and that will turn blue so that's it for the ammonium ion so Let's do this again. So ammonium ion, in order to test for it, we only, only use sodium hydroxide. And the sodium hydroxide reacting with the ammonium ion will produce ammonia gas. And in order to test for the ammonia gas, we use red litmus paper. And this paper will turn blue since ammonia gas is basic. And for your information, guys, those tests, need to be memorized off by heart because the examiner will ask you about them and there's no way you're gonna know the colors of the salts that we're gonna talk about so you have to have to memorize these by heart there is no other way to do it i'm so sorry but you have to do this so let's start Actually, let's continue. Okay, so the next ion we're going to talk about is copper. And we said copper can react with either ammonia or sodium hydroxide. And let's see what's going to happen. So a blue, a pale blue, so a pale blue precipitate, and I write it PPT for simplicity, will form. And if you add, so if you add more ammonia this pale blue precipitate will dissolve forming a deep blue solution and i write it as a s o l n for simplicity so you guys don't get confused so for copper if we add ammonia a pale blue precipitate will form and if you keep adding more and more ammonia this pale blue precipitate will turn into a deep blue solution now let's move on to iron so iron also reacts with both sodium hydroxide and ammonia 
So let's see. This reaction will yield a pale green precipitate. So this will yield a pale green precipitate. So the iron 2, a green precipitate. Now let's see iron 3. Iron 3 forms a red brown precipitate. So iron 2, green. Iron 3 is reddish brown. Now finally, let's see zinc. And the reaction will, with zinc will form a white precipitate. And that's that for the tests. Now let's recap and let's make it easier to memorize. We said we are going to test for five different cations. And all of these, for simplicity, we're going to use ammonia except for the ammonium ion. We're going to use sodium hydroxide, as we mentioned right here. And we said for the copper... The iron, whether it's two or three, and the zinc, they form colored compounds because they are transition metals, and you mentioned this before. So the copper is associated with the color blue, iron is associated with the color green, and iron three is associated with reddish brown precipitate, and finally zinc is white. Except for ammonium, which produces ammo ammonia gas. So that's that for the testing of cations. You guys remember that the copper, the iron, and the zinc form colored compound except for the ammonium, which forms ammonia gas when reacting with sodium hydroxide. So good luck in memorizing this. I hope this made it easier for you guys. And in the next video, we're going to talk about testing for aqueous anions and later on we're going to talk about testing for gases so stay tuned and good luck